This is the Power of Osmosis Podcast, powered by the Vidwheel Creator Network. Hi, everyone. This is the Power of Osmosis video podcast, powered by Vidwheel Creator Network. Today, I am glad to be joined uh, for the second time by Jonathan Gorsica and Nicholas Baroni of Helm Experience and Design. Gentlemen, welcome back. Thanks for having us, John. We're excited to be here in this little virtual world of ours. That's right. That's right. Nick, any remarks in the opening here? No, we're just always happy to talk with you. And you know, hopefully this is valuable for anyone that, that's listening. Our millions I'm of sure watchers and listeners. Our millions of them. Now, is this season two officially? Yeah. This is season two, and um, a friend of ours, Bob Pawalski, went out yesterday, um, who was also for his second time on the Power of Osmosis video podcast. So it's exciting to have you gentlemen on for the second time on season two to talk about all the great things that we're all working on together in the community or community. Yeah, it's really great to be here. And again, it's it's great to see um, that you've been picked up by Netflix for season two here. Um, and it's exciting to be back. Um, it's it's fantastic. It's cool to see all the guests that have come on. It's it's wonderful. Now, Netflix is not an official sponsor yet. Not yet. I was just going to say. Thoughts or ideas. Might, Thoughts or ideas. You might want to reread the notes there. It's actually Amazon Prime, Amazon Studios, but close. Oh, you know, okay. A and... I like that. This, I like the that. dynamics are already juiced here, boys. And, um, you know, a lot of what we'll talk about to our listeners and watchers in this here second iteration of having John and Nick on the show will be things that relate to growth, of course, community, entrepreneurship. This is a bit of a check in and update on all things, uh, again, what Helm is doing, but then how Helm plays in the spaces of tech, entrepreneurship, and community, most importantly. So, a lot of growth, the business environment's on the way back, right, gents? Um, society, business, you know, health, the public health situation. Um, and so there's growth being seen. Uh, I've seen it, interest in talking with me and what I'm doing at Osmosis, but then <clears throat> all my other clients, including yourselves, a lot going on. It's exciting. So speaking of growth, let's hit on Mentor Deck, which is a... Um, you know, something that Helm is instrumental in having uh, where it is at this point in time in the growth it's seeing. So let's hit on that. Yeah, uh, it's been great. So Mentor Deck is really uh, our first product, um, our first successful product um, that we've created as a product studio, Helm. And it really is a platform to allow people to curate and organize and track uh, these mentor relationships. We found that so many people who offer mentorship as a value add to their service, whether that be an incubator, accelerator, a, a VC firm, or even you know a higher ed micro network, right? These people use cohorts of mentors to add value to their offering, right? And, and think of like an alumni network or um, you know even a company network that you were previously at. The people that you know, the people that you have access to can help you kind of level up uh, faster than ever before. And so Mentor Deck is a, a software platform that allows people to curate those mentors, deploy them out into the world, and then track and see kind of the efficacy of the meetings that they have, whether that be with students or portfolio company founders. Um, in general, it's really kind of the simple, neat product that that's getting a lot of traction in the world today. Beautifully said, brother. Well, well stated. Nick, anything to add? No, I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, we've, we've dabbled in, in trying to build some apps before, um, like external of our services work. So, you know, it's great that we'll take what we learn with the clients that we've um, worked on to, to build their apps and companies. Um, and, you know, it, it's also just indicative of the kind of app that would work like, like this for us. And, and get some traction that it's it's something that we've like lived in that environment, right? Like we've, we've been in incubators and around startups and have acted as mentors. So, you know, it, it makes sense for us that we can, you know, essentially build the kind of thing that we saw as a need, you know, it was like a pain to schedule these meetings on our side, um, let alone, you know, at some of the incubators we worked with. So it, you know, we just saw that that benefit was there and, you know, it's evolved and now it's, 
people are using it, which is really exciting and fun to just to work on. And, you know, in addition to the, the great client work we get to do. Yeah. And it's so funny. Like, I'm glad you touched on this idea that it's really something that was born out of a problem we were experiencing. Um, one of our, let's call it failures or learnings of, of products in the past, we built a, an application that allowed people to chat through um, emoji um, and like <laughs> essentially a that really allows them to be in a single repository, sortable, accessible to anybody who visits. So it's exciting to see. And again, it's this like offshoot of our, our core service business at Helm. Um, we, we get to learn a lot of lessons, just serving clients, building software, working on design and UX and uh, mentor that gets to take a lot of those lessons in uh, the, that we learn from founders and then deploy them into our own product. Awesome. Johnny, I got to be honest, I lost about 30 seconds there. And I don't know if it was, if you can hear me, hopefully you can. My network looks okay. Um, I don't know what the heck just happened. This has happened before. So I, I've heard of a lot of what you said. <laughs> so I don't, can you guys still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I can hear you. So, so much for Amazon. But, but I lost them too. <laughs> you lost them too there, right. Mitch? Amazon's just turning yeah. the dial. Yeah. They're like, they mentioned Netflix, turned down the bandwidth yeah, of John's yeah. house. Uh, <laughs> their Eros, they're both Eero networks are going down. Well, Nick, okay. Am I so back? On, Am I back? You're back. You're on back air. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're on air here, and I'm going to let that go, and I could probably sparse it out. So maybe what we'll do, and I, this will just be a testament to John's visionary, passionate uh, ways. Um, if you could just give us a regurgitation briefly on what you said, maybe 30 seconds back, brother. Yeah, sure. We were, you know, I was just saying how, how Mentor Deck really was birthed through a problem that we actually had, where in the past we've kind of invented products that were for fun and weren't from a significant problem. We were like creating something without first having the problem defined and naturally those things didn't get the traction that we're seeing today and so now that we've really identified the problem we've identified who our end user is and we've matched those up and we're starting to deliver the solutions uh we're really validating that the, there's a need for the product and there's a significant need in the market for uh mentorship management and mentor mentorship quantification Again, very well said, and not to be a back massage session here, but we'll see once we go back to the tape, if the audio is there, how closely uh, associated your uh, re-summary there was. And so to jump out of that, you know, that little mishap or whatever that was, technology, um, mentorship really is, is everything. You guys are mentors to me. Um, I mentor others, and it's all about that passing of the torch in a sense of the knowledge, right? And we're not far in age. But, um, you know, Kobe, the late great Kobe Bryant talks about that. And that true success is it's not all the championships that you win as a team, you know, for in his case, for the Lakers. Um, it was how he could take his passions and help others ignite the journey of discovering their passions, which then allowed them to, you know, actualize their dreams, their mission. Obviously, a lot of it had to do with championships, which they had five of them um, on his team. But the point is mentorship, beautiful. And one more thing. The necessity of all invention, the mother of all invention is necessity is what I meant to say. So <laughs> I had it out until the top. Regardless. Pardon? It, you know, well, I, I picked that up regardless. Um, it, it's funny that you, you talk to this, you know, you mentioned like our age difference and that like How we're much? a mentor towards you. And in, in a way we don't think about it that way, right? Like, it's more about the access that we have to one another and the learning that we provide back and forth, right? It's not, well, we give to you, you give to us. It's not one way. And th that's where we've seen the most effective relationships. You know, uh, Nicholas is a, a good friend of mine and we've known each other a long time. Um, yet the things that he says to me on a weekly basis affects my trajectory in life. It affects it in the day. So like I could stamp him as being one of my mentors, right? It, it's, 
it's about in a way removing the formality of it and being open and candid with someone else to, hey, here are my weaknesses. How can you help me? That might be personal weaknesses. That might be uh, challenges that I'm having in a business or a relationship, right? And then showing that to someone else who can maybe uh, show you a different angle or, or guide you down a path that you didn't even know existed. So um, it's really that that guides us from like a North Star perspective, right? We realize that access to people and to the right people can allow for the modeling of specific behaviors and specific habits, which ultimately changes people's lives. If one meeting can really nudge someone and put them on a whole new vector in life in which didn't exist before they connected with the person. And so we wanna create more of those in the world and provide access to mentors for to people who didn't have that or don't even know they exist. Yeah, I mean, and, and so uh, a question that comes out of that that commentary for me then and all this kind of higher level, um, we'll call it, it's not necessarily philosophical, it is in a way and it's beautiful, but how about today and then proverbially, proverbially tomorrow? What's today like for Mentor Deck in terms of like where it's at? How can we, how can we connect? How can we engage? Um, a lot of questions there, but like give me the today and then, and then after today, let's talk about where you're going with it. Yeah, great, great stuff. So today it's really about meeting the needs of the customer, right? So our product is simple, but it does things very well. It provides the repository, it provides organized mentors, and it provides access that's controllable by whoever wants to be you know, the director or the curator of the mentor. And so we're focused on doing that really well today and bringing on happy paying customers that are willing to have a two-way conversation with us. Um, it's important um, anybody in, in software development understand that you have to build that relationship with people in order for learning to continue and for the product to get better. So we really have you know, our, our ears open, um, to whether it be a customer discovery call or an existing customer to gain insight onto what they really need. And it's not just about checking the box for specific features that they ask. It's really about threading the needle through all these different comments and all these different conversations to predict what they'll need in the future and what that core uh, root problem is that we're going to help solve with Mentor Deck. And, and he's kind of yeah, alluding and, to the future, right? Like you're talking about the future. You, we want to build tools that make those conversations better and more effective and just more interesting. So like oh, we need to learn how those meetings go to, to start to do that. We definitely have some ideas and stuff on a roadmap already, but you know, really it's just providing you know more tools that a mentor and a mentee can utilize to to just to get to know each other better, to learn more, to to track this stuff, you know, get them using the app for more than just setting up meetings, which is what it does really well right now. Um, so that's what'll be coming in the future as we start to learn these things. Excellent. So there's, okay. there's some exciting updates there. And, and so kind of segueing for the update kind of check-in piece, we talked about planting seeds in pod one. Uh, and that's a Johnny, Johnny G, uh, beautiful analogy there, or metaphor, sorry. Um, I'm curious to know more about like, you know, in that building seeds within that is impact, right? So what, what are the impacts you're seeing that you're having on I mean, clients specifically, the community specifically, but really those are just with people. Um, so clients, community, where's the impact at six months later? Yeah, it's it's so much of that, right? So when you talk about mentorship or you talk about the services that Helm provides, it's really about um, you know planting the seed, the seed of an idea, the seed of a connection, Right, the seed of the uh, initial meeting you have with someone who's going to, you know, change your path. And so, when we talk about the the services that we provide at Helm, you know, whether that be, you know, design, UX design, interface design, um, all the way up through full stack development and, and helping people uh, shape their product idea into reality, um, that really gets us going. So, you know, we've been working with a number of um, early stage companies that have that idea that is really special, that is that seed. And we're bringing those to market um, on a number of really, really impactful things, both um, mm -hmm. in education as well as like uh, healthcare and really innovative things there. 
super exciting. Nick, anything to add? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one I can like one company I can just sort of reference. I think so. It's someone you should probably have on the podcast, or we'll we should connect with. But um, Carly Hill from Car- Kale Resources is a uh, someone that came to us like three years ago. You know, with this idea for an app to improve job readiness in the trade uh, among tradespeople and like you know the construction industry. So like a space that just isn't touched by tech and you know, that's a story where we help them build a prototype, sort of build that first version of the app. And now they're getting traction and we continue to work with them, you know, supporting that product, adding to it. And, you know, now they're scaling up, right? Like they've, they've now started to prove their market fit, uh, product market fit, and are, 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 you know, looking to raise more money so they can now like hit the gas. And like, we've seen this before with other companies we've worked with, um, you know, like ACV. Um, and it's, it's really, it, for us, like, that's one of the most rewarding things because, you know, we've, we've taken something that literally started as an idea or discussion and now is a company that employs people here and, you know, helps facilitate like, wealth creation here in, in Buffalo and in Western New York. So, you know, like that's one that is, you know, as you talk about like community, how it all like impacts each other is something that, you know, we've gotten to see firsthand, you know, like. With among others and they're sort of like in a quieter space and they you know they're not as as loud as some of these other startups but i think they'll they'll start to be and you'll start to see them in, in um as one to watch in the coming years um which is also be interesting you know good for you to talk to um on here um just another place that you know we've been doing work recently like we we still um after five years manage the the 43 north application so we built that the application that um five years ago for them, the custom app. Um, and that manages all of the companies that come through uh, that apply, you know, for the million dollar prize. So, um, and we, you know, we're, we're, we're constantly improving it, making it better for them, you know, learning from like how the competition changes. Um, so we've been doing that this year, um, the past few weeks as it, they've rolled it out. Anyone that's listening should reply if they have a startup idea or um, are at the right phase for them, which is around like Series A. And, uh, you know, like for us, though, it's great, though, because we get to play this small part in, again, the same thing, like bringing companies to Buffalo, um, you know, hopefully creating lots of jobs and you know wealth in the area. You know, and it all starts with, you know, this little piece of technology that we built that just, you know, collects information and then lets, uh, you know, some really smart people here in Buffalo judge it, you know, and move them along this process um, you know, until it, you know, culminates in the event at Chase that they've run. So like, you know, they do an amazing job running the, all of that. And it's all really their effort, but you know, there's little bits of code we wrote that, that start to like take off the process that, you know, is always really fun for us to see. Little seeds of code, right, brother? That's it. Uh... Yeah. Oh, Probably that's like good. 20,000 lines, but it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's great. As I say, when you said simple little technology, I'm like, it's anything but, you know, the things that the work that you do, the layers, the professionalism, the, um, you know, the strictness in which you deploy technology and, and so well, we'll call it software development, app development, you know, it's anything but uh, little. So kudos to you guys. You know, you, you, you got me thinking about a couple of things. Um, and so I'll start with one. Um, there's a, there's a saying that that's out there or a, a mindset, if you will, that we as business owners are only as strong as the communities that we live in. So, you know, in that way, right. If, if we're, if we have these great companies, but we don't want to have the talent to help us grow the company, but, and also we don't have anyone to serve, um, then we don't have a business. So, and that's why it's beautiful to watch your story. And I'm so glad that we started, you know, we reconnected at the end of 2020 and osmosis was able to come in and, and lend some, some value and some energy. Um, not that you were lacking for any, but uh, just, you know, that specific osmosis energy that we, we, we all know. We about. were lacking that. Yeah, you were baby. Let's go. But that said, my curiosity, well, it's not even a curiosity. It's you guys, <laughs> the two of you and your team, it's, it's well documented how involved, well, it is and it isn't maybe in a sense, because I learned even when we reconnected end of 2020, all the work you do do in the community as it relates to technology. So you mentioned Shays, that's that's another, from what I remember, if I'm remembering correctly, someone else you've worked with. Um, and, and I know there are others out there um, that we've talked about in the past. Um, and so I, w- I was just curious, maybe 
the, our millions of watchers and listeners to, to hear some of the familiar names that you've worked with, they now can associate, wow, how I'm, through their technology, and I'm, I'm ranting a little, but through their technology and their, their, their expertise and their services are helping a Shays, a 43 North, um, you know, Cahill Technology, uh, for instance, as well. But more of the Shays in 43 North, you know, you're helping these companies grow. And I know there are others. So if you'd care to ruminate further, I, I'd love to hear more about who else you're servicing in the community. Take the lead, Nicholas. Come on, Nikki. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, there's, it, it's tough because there's so we, so we've had a lot of startups, like a lot. And, you know, the joke I always make is there's a lot of startups. There's a couple you've heard of and a bunch you've never heard of because startups are tough and sometimes they fail. Um, but, you know, in addition to the startups, we, we, we're, we've started to grow and help, um, you know, larger local businesses, right? So like, um, you know, West Her is a company we've gotten, been fortunate enough to work with um, and continue to do stuff with. Um, and it, it's all intermittent, dependent. It's hard to say like exactly what it might be that someone's interacting with, but you know, help them grow and and do things um, more effectively. Um, uh, in a, in a, oh, sorry. And then, like, additionally, in the past, we've worked with uh, Independent Health um, and uh, Riches. Um, so, like these big companies that you know don't you know they're they're huge, right? Like they're pale. We pale in comparison, but we get to help them be nimble and maybe do some R&D or, or act, like help them build like a startup idea or concept internally, um, which is something that, you know, I think that is beneficial um, for them. You know, just looking at other names, you know, like we also continue to do work with Lloyd. We've been with them since day one. So they're just another one of those like startup stories that has turned into, you know, 150 person company and, you know, like their food service. So largely the stuff we do supports their main product. But um, you know that's that's a that's a that's one we've continued to to grow with. Uh, you know who else? Uh, I mean, like uh, bigger names like uh, you know the Buffalo History Museum. Uh, you know, Love Go History. Bike Buffalo, ah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, a, a a really great company called Produce Peddlers, um, who connects uh, farmers to institutions and restaurants with local food. Uh, check that out at producepeddlers.com. Uh, oh, you know, there, there's just a bunch of things like we, it's so fun to learn about these different types of businesses and really you, cause Nicholas and I are designers. So we, we, we dive in, right. We really like to understand the challenges that they're having and how the technology is going to serve them. We never like it to be transactional. Okay. You get this piece of software, a website, a web app, whatever that is. And then we go away, right. It's about the learning that's built in and how that grows over time. So uh, another one's like um, you might have heard of Laundromat, uh, a local dog daycare yes. and dog grooming. They just won um, the Pooch Perfect competition uh, on ABC, yes. which is super cool, right? And in a way, it, like follows this, like um, or is like in line with Lloyd, right? When they went and won the the competition, right? We're on TV and continue, yeah, and continue to like explode. So um, wow. the those that company is incredible, right? They offer this really unique service and they're just located in Kenmore and they're just continuing to crush it. And it's fun to like build them this, you know, cool modern website that allows them to save time internally and, you know, really showcase their differentiated offerings. So it's, it's all things like that, right? It's like everything from food service to big company down to like startup. That's just an idea, right? We dive in, we have to get into the trenches with people to understand and uncover it all. And then that's really the only way we deliver uh, a solution of value. And how do you do that in those trenches? It's a word that starts with a Q. Something that's one of the most powerful skills and tools that we could have. Are you leading question. with a question? Hey, uh, a question with a question, let's go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, seriously it's though, like, it is. People think it's easy, right? People try to like, gloss over and be like, oh, we're going to make it super easy for you. Well, the fact of the matter is it's not, right? And it's not easy because software and technology is never really in a fixed state. Um, it goes out and then it can be, you know, shaped again and again and again. And that shaping process really, you know, takes time. It takes discussion. It takes questioning. It, it takes questioning assumptions that you might have had about your business for the past decade and really bring them to the table and saying, you know, is this who we are? Is this what our business truly needs? 
And, you know, we love asking those hard questions, right? We believe through those challenges, through that maybe friction and even arguments, right, comes something better. And that's part of not only our process with working with clients, but also internally, you know, we're, we're not, we're not doing our job unless there are some like arguments internally, right? And if people are complacent and sitting back and not challenging why we're doing something or our methods or our process, then, you know, we're not, we're not creating a company that's going to create something of unique value for people. And the same goes for the relationship between, you know, agency and client. Right. If we're just nodding and we're like, okay, sure. Okay, sure. We'll build it. Okay, sure. You know, and we're not questioning and not having that honest relationship. We won't create something of value. That's just not how good things are get done. Um, I don't know. I've probably mentioned this before, but there's a wonderful story about Steve Jobs and the neighbor takes a handful of rocks and puts them in a rock tumbler and says, Steve, come back in three days. And Steve Jobs, little Steve Jobs, kid Steve Jobs comes back in three days and these dirty, rocks are polished and beautiful and it like clicked in his mind that it was through friction that made those beautiful right and that's always stuck that story stuck with me and how we create things in the world like friction's not bad it actually helps in creating the beautiful um and so whether that's you know running a, a marathon and it just sucks sometimes and there's friction there or it's about you know questioning concepts and future priority right those things really are are for the better in the end my face hurts from smiling so much. There's just, there's such, there's such good points. I mean, sincerely, and I did not know that Steve Jobs story. So for all of our, our listeners and watchers, hopefully that that's another, just another nugget of gold that you can take away. Let's, let's do a quick, it's not a pause, but let's do a quick kind of recap, but more of a recap that involves how to's, right? So all my, uh, my last, whatever, I don't know, 10 podcasts are all how to's. So, you know, we talked um, the growth that's being had. We talked about plan, you know, the planning of how technology works, planning of seeds, um, and how community is such a an important piece. Are there any how tos in there that, like, let's let's say, I'll just I'll lead, right? It's a how to get more involved with community, right? How to incite more growth within your life, your business, or whatever it may be. Are there any little tidbits we can lace um, for our audience? Um, from the two of you, uh, incredible people and leaders that you think would be worthwhile listening to, watching. Mm -hmm. Great question. You know, it's a little deep. It's funny. A little deep. Yeah, and our, you know, our, our world has changed, and it's like coming back, but it's still very different. Um, you know, the I'll go even deeper, right? I'll raise you or one level, right? Which is you have to remove the fear from it all, right? So whether that's um, you know, going to an event and feeling awkward or introducing yourself to someone you've never met before. There's always this like angst and this fear that gets in your way, right? Fear of failure, fear of being embarrassed, whatever that is, just an uncomfortable feeling that you're fearing. Or when you go into a room of people on a networking event and you know nobody, you're going to be uncomfortable. And you have to find comfort in that and you have to take that fear and realize that it's not your controller, right? That might be a tool for you, but it shouldn't be an impediment to going out and getting involved. And you have to go to the events, right? You have to reach out to people. You have to make calls and write emails and be open and candid and face those those fears um, that get in your way. We've all found comfort in sitting in our houses in a way for, for a year, right? And found like a new way. Um, and now there's a retraining that kind of needs to happen. Um, and maybe I'm speaking a little bit personally, not for everybody, but you know, there's certainly this uh, shift in which I have to say, okay, I can't let that fear win, right? Go do the thing, right? Embrace that discomfort and go through it, not stand still. Um, and maybe that was uh, a little more abstract answer than you were looking for. I think Nicholas has, uh, I could see it churning in his mind. Uh, he has some ideas too there. I'll just ping in quick and say, I was looking for the exact answer that you were about to deliver. There's never an okay. actual... I'm looking for. So you beautifully um, met that, that inquiry. Nick, be additive, brother. What do you got? I can, uh, so I can do something more tactical, maybe. Um, so I, I just read this on Twitter, um, of all places. But it the idea was that, um, you know, like, figure out what this what like vice you have. And it's often something like, you know, scrolling Twitter, or like a, a place where you feel like you're wasting time, right? Um, so it could be, you know, like whatever, watching Netflix or 
or like wasting time on Instagram or TikTok or something. And, you know, it's helpful to like sometimes put time to that and look and be like, oh, I spent 45 minutes here. Like that was not a good use of my time and apply that to something that you want to grow in. You know, so like early on in the pandemic last year, um, it was exactly that, like scrolling Instagram, just, you know, like doom scrolling through, like never stopping and <laughs> saying like, you know, there's an app next Instagram that I want to learn, you know, use to learn Italian. So like anytime I think to myself, I'm going to use, I'm, I'm, I want to, let me see what's going on on Instagram. I'll apply that and say, let's use Duolingo instead to, um, to, mm. you know, take some classes on Italian. Um you know, so like that sort of, it's that mindset, but with anything, you know, like you have to determine what that pro, like what that vice is that you have and where you're just wasting time. And it's not like, yeah, there's a point where it goes from like, oh, I'm doing this to make myself feel better or, you know, cause I enjoy it to it's too addictive and I'm, I need to like cut it. Right. Um, so like, you know, just realizing what that might be and applying it elsewhere. Like I'm going to use it to learn investing, you know, again, maybe it's with an app, maybe it's not. Um, or maybe, you know, or become something more work related where you want to learn programming, you know, like I'm just, a lot of these tend to be learning, but you know, for that sort of application, it's really beneficial because you're just taking this trained, like you, this is a habit that we've all developed. Um, and it's because, you know, these apps that are worth hundreds of billions of dollars at this point are really addictive. Like that's what's made them that valuable. So you almost need to like retrain your brain to with that, like that same Pavlovian response where it's like, oh, oh, I should check Instagram. I should actually do this. Like redirect yourself a bit. Nick, it's, that, to add wow. to that, it's like an yeah. awareness, right? Like you have an awareness, right? Which allows you to realize you're in a bad habit. And in a way, like if we lose our awareness around those things, we lose the ability to change them, right? You know, you have to first know that you don't want to be doing this, right? And whether mm -hmm. that be just immediate awareness, reflection, journaling, whatever, right? That's step one, right? And that, could, that applies to business habits. That applies to personal habits, right? In our relationship, everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could be checking that. email. Like, are you checking email 20 times a day? You know, like, that, that is isn't two, two times. You know? and two times, right. And so, you know, like, and you replace that then with, okay, instead of checking email, I'm going to put, you know, 20 minutes and detach from the internet and just, you know, do work, right? Or like you know, commit to something that I can get done um, in that time frame. So it's good. My face, my face hurts, guys, from smiling. This is, I mean, Nick, that is honestly one of the best tidbits of advice I've heard from any person in my entire life. I, I wish I could cite where I read it. I could all and maybe retweet it or something. You Bruce lead it. You Bruce lead it though, because whatever <laughs> was in that post, you took it. We took what was useful. You discarded what was not, and unique, you uniquely made it your own. And so, thank you for sharing that with our 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 audience, with John and John. Not to take away from you, yours was fantastic as well. Fear, false evidence appearing real, kind of thing, right? Feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, and fear is really, um, is fear is kind of the cover of friction and friction is what creates growth. So let's go. I'd like to throw mine in there. If you guys would be willing to let me ruminate Please. for a few seconds. So yesterday on our bi-weekly call, not to date this, cause these are evergreen episodes, but, uh, you guys were like, man, Johnny, oh, he's, he's serious right now. This dude's locked in. Like, what's up? Okay. And what did I cite? I cited this guy, Tim Grover, Tim Grover, um, this is his first book, 2013 Relentless, From Good to Great to Unstoppable, a must read, a must read. Um, his recent book, 2021, it's called Winning, and winning, the I is a one. So he coached Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, <clears throat> the late, the great Kobe Bryant, God rest his soul, and then uh, others, Dwayne Wade, Michael Phelps, all these different executives. It's fine. It's, you know, it's great. But what I wanted to throw out there was somewhat congruent to Johnny's is um, you know, you hear that statement of you, you gotta, you gotta double down on your strengths and you gotta kind of avoid or, or, you know, stay away from weaknesses, mitigate your weaknesses. Right. So in a recent podcast, Tim Grover, because he's kind of doing his book tour for winning, um, it just came out this year. And I'm also audiobooking that simultaneous, highly recommend, highly, highly recommend both. He says though, that weakness, when someone is aware to what both of you said there, that awareness, John, you were the one saying the awareness is that first step. So you have to be aware. A winner is aware of their weaknesses, but be very careful to discern between weakness and a flaw. 
People think they're the same. They are not. So a flaw is actually something that can be used and, 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 and harnessed and then energized towards greatness, towards the actualization of, of achieving greatness. What does that mean? Kobe Bryant, this is Tim Grover here. He says, um, well, what do you mean by flaws? What were the flaws of Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan? Was, it was the interviewers ask. And so he goes, he starts with Michael Jordan very quickly. Michael Jordan, he's got a competitive problem. Everything he did, it was a flaw. It was a flaw that a lot of people thought was a weakness because he was overly competitive. He was too wound up. He was too focused, too intense. No, no, that's what got him six rings. And then last but not least, Kobe Bryant, he was obsessed. He was obsessed like I am and like you guys are with the things you do. I am literally 24-7 obsessed with what I do. I cannot stop. I'm always on. I'm always excited. And so when you take that obsession flaw and you turn it into your craft and, and channel it against your craft, greatness awaits, brother. Greatness awaits, brothers. So that was for me. Just forget okay. flaws. They're 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 not weaknesses. They are what are the they're the keys to they are they are the keys to your greatness, is what I'm trying to say. So let's go. Yeah. And so John, I'm curious to kind of like go further on that, right? Get it. The, Get it. This idea that you know it creates an awareness. And then Nicholas said something like he knew what he wanted to do, right? You wanted to learn Italian. So like this idea that you have this goal, either documented or not. I'm curious and I'm flipping the script again, but like from a goal standpoint, goal setting standpoint, both personally and professionally, do you, John, do you start to like document that stuff out in the future? Like, Hey, this is what I want. This is what I'm after. Yeah, Looking, I do. Searching. I'm just going to, I'm just going to flash. I'm not going to go deep. I'm going to say yes, but these okay. are two great tools. This is the size of a phone um, fits in a pocket. And this is a little bit bigger for when you want to get a little extra juicy with it. Mm. I love that word. Um, and then obviously the iPhone, um, the iPhone can come in handy at times to track things electronically. Um, but most certainly, um, I don't, you know, it's, it's a great, it's a great on air, uh, real time accountability, uh, moment in that I need to be better at having those actual, like specific goals, right? Like a marathon is a specific goal. You have to run those 26.2 miles. You have to be ready to do that mentally and physically or else you're falling short. So it's like, you know, let's just use money. It's an easy example. I want to make a million dollars. This is just hypothetical. Well, you, whatever, maybe it's a more specific number because you figured out reverse engineer, like what you need to like do what you want, buy a car, buy a house, whatever it is. So you have that specific goal. And now you, it's like Jim Rohn says, Rohn, R-O-H-N, not Rome. Tony Robbins is mentor, right? It's like, if you don't have goals, then what is all that activity Therefore, you can't track anything. There's there's no measurement, right, to say how well I'm doing in this very moment. So, yes, I do have things written down to answer your question, Johnny, um, but I do need to get more specific and, and more regimented. So thank you for that question. Yeah, it's just interesting to see how much they're related, right? This idea that we have to have an intent in order to do something that might be, hey, I have an idea for a business that's a software business, but I'm scared, very afraid of going into this and maybe leaving a very comfortable career. So there's like intent and fear, right? And that needs to turn into action. And then that stuff goes forward in a cycle that you're always kind of like playing the jazz of, of how do I turn this fear into motivation, into the goal that I want to achieve, but without kind of tying those things together in a trifecta, uh, you know, you lose it, right? If you don't define your goal, it's very hard to look back and say, oh, I've achieved this. And I know like, like Nichols and I will do this regularly with Helm is kind of define those goals for a business. And sometimes when it's like, man, we might be having a stressful week or, you know, it just doesn't feel like everything's clicking the way we want it to. We could actually look back at these goals and be like, look, 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 we're we're ticking them off, right? So while the line goes up and down, right, the trend line is going up and to the right. And yeah, it's just a it's a fascinating way to to look at, you know, what happens after you plant the seed, right? Are you achieving? Are you, you know, are you measuring, right? Or or are you just spinning your tires? And and believe me, man, like over the past year, there's been times when I've been spinning my tires and I and you feel it, right? You're like, what it what's what's the word for it again uh nicholas it's um lang uh, languishing, right? Lang languishing yeah like languishing, yeah. languishing right the new york times wrote about this a bit and it's like you could feel that sometimes you have to have, look back and say like okay i am achieving the things i want to achieve well said it's all about sustainability too right guys it's like mm -hmm. 
you have to know why you're doing what you're doing. So, you know, going back to fitness, because that's a, that's a common area where things can be cyclical. I, I was a great offender of it for many years. You three, four months, you're excited. Maybe it's beach season, you pump weight, you put you know, muscle on, you look good. Then you start to burn yourself out. You're like, why am I like really doing this now? Sure. Beach season. Come on. That's anything but substantive. So when it's more substantive to that, like I want to be, so I got hypothetical. I want to be, I want to be walking my daughter or son down the aisle one day. Uh, I want to be a great example for my, for my family, my friends, the community in terms of how I take care of myself, all these other things. Um, and you weave that up into an equation of sorts or a formula, you know, again, sustainability is top of mind then. Cause it's like, it's right. And it's awareness too guys. Right. And then I want to flip back to Nick to give him some air time, but it's like being aware of why you do what you do at all times, back to goals, having goals in your notebook, but also then your, why your mission, your purpose, why it is you're here. You know, you go to an event, you talked Johnny earlier about uh, events and being scared or not scared, but having a fear of, of going into a room where you don't know anyone. Um, well, I, if, if, if you were to go into that room and ask your first person you met, Hey, I'm John, what's your name? And they tell you your name and you go, why do you do what you do? You're probably going to get a pretty puzzled look. Like, why is this person asking me this? I have no idea what the heck they mean. I don't know if I even did know, I don't know what my actual why or purpose is. I've tried it actually just before COVID and people were like, what? And obviously, you know, me, I, I don't really care in terms of what response I might get. I was very curious. So um, the response is though, people had no idea what to answer. And I don't want a blanket statement that there are plenty of people that know their mission, their purpose, but that is also very important to this equation. Nick, more from you, brother, if you want to be additive to any of that. I, mean, I think it's, it's important to ask that question, just to challenge them to think about it, you know, because that's something we do at least when we're working on a project is, you know, we'll often try to get at companies why and help them shape it if they don't fully know. So, um, you know, that's, it, I think it, it, it's the kind of thing that can be helpful, um, you know, and like you said, you know, the example you gave is it, like Jonathan and I both have, have young children and that's an easy one. Um, you know, so if you're someone that, that is, that chooses to have children, like that's you know, your why almost always points back to them. It's easy to just look at a picture of them and say like, you know, this is what I'm doing or why I'm doing something, you know, and, and for people that don't choose to have children, you know, it's, it's, it's still important to just determine, you know, even like when I look at before, you know, my wife and I had kids, it would be like, okay, planning for, you know, a single family home, or, you know, like you just, or going on vacation, whatever, like going to Europe, like you just, you create, like, this is the thing we're working towards. And then, okay, what do we need to do to achieve, I want to say the key results to get to that, but essentially like you're doing that, right? Like you're documenting, like, okay, we need to get our passports and, you know, like there's a, there's a puzzle that leads up to you know, achieving that goal. Um, and that's, that's, that's essentially what, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about setting, right? Is this, is that, and you know, it's, it's important. So, you know, saying you want to make a million dollars is maybe not the right goal sometimes because that's too broad. But saying you want to make eighty three thousand three hundred thirty three dollars a month, and how am I going to get there? You know, is those like lets you start to break it down a little bit. Bite size, um, right? At least, and then do it by week. You know, and by two week periods. So, um, yeah, it's these all like lead up to, you know, just like higher performing. You know, in whatever it is you want to do, whether it is business or, or like you said, workout, spinning. You know, anything. You know, Let's it go. Can be anything. That's a uh, you know. That you guys would dig this book, uh, Atomic Habits. It kind James of talks Claire. about, yeah, it talks about the specifics there. Like, if the objective, like if you know, you mentioned key results, objectives, and key results, right? If you define the objective and then build that like smallest habit, it's interesting how it just compounds over time, right? And he talks very specifically about, you know, don't don't tell yourself you need to run five miles out of the gate. Like tell yourself you need to run for two minutes and that's it. And then just do that every day. And sooner or later, your mind will say, well, I'm already out here running. I'm going to go longer and longer and longer. Um, and I'm, I'm curious to like, John, you know, you've been an, a, a runner. I think you could, an endurance runner uh, from my perspective, right? Like how did, how did habit and changing maybe your goals and objectives and even your daily routines get you to, you know, being able to knock out uh, a, a marathon, a half marathon um, with what appears to not even be breaking a sweat. 
Yeah. Uh, well, at last point, I appreciate that. Uh, that might be arguable in some senses, depends on the situation. I just want to come back to James Clear really quick, and then I'll answer the question. There is an article out there that James Clear put out, and I wish I had my phone, man. I don't. It's upstairs uh, intentionally. Um, but Danny Buckmaster, shout out to Tresca Design, who I you know, just kind of brought you guys together through email or whatever. I think it was yesterday. Um, Danny and I, when we were together last, he told me about an article that James Clear put out about how if you work on being, I think it was 1% better every day, there's a multiple that is spit out. It's like, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's maybe 90 some X or something in terms of how much better you are at that, whatever skill or endeavor. Mm -hmm. And then if you do, if you, it, it, it's over a 365 period of, of time, I think it is or whatever. But then he says, if you, if you're, if you're, um, stagnant or if it's maybe a percent worse or something i i am bastardizing this pretty badly so we'll get the link in the show notes but basically it was like it took like three months to get to zero when you're doing nothing or or there's a negative kind of habit so i have that in my phone upstairs i it's fine but um so thanks for bringing him up in that book it's that's back here somewhere on my shelf let's go but to answer your question um running it's exactly then additive and congruent, I should say, with James Clear. When you start, and also with Nick, in terms of that million dollars being too broad, right? If you say, I have to run, or, or again, I'll even reference Kobe Bryant. You want to climb Mount Everest, and you, you're at the bottom of, the, of Mount Everest, and you look up, oh, my God, I'm never going to do this. But if you just go step by step, or maybe 100 yards at a time, it's much more attainable. And the mind controls all. The mind literally, it knows everything about you. It, it's the only thing that shows, this is David Goggins stuff. So I'm not, I don't want to, I want to, I want to get killed by him because he's a, he's a Navy SEAL, ex Navy SEAL, all the savage motivational guy, but mind controls all. It's the only thing that shows up every time. It's the only thing that knows everything about you, your mind, right? About yourself. So if you can do things that almost trick your mind in a sense, right? Here's a quick example for our, our listeners and how to, you want to go run, um, you know, say you are a runner and you're dreading a seven mile run that's in your schedule or you just wanted to do it arbitrarily you you, you don't want to run the seven well the hardest thing is to do is to get those those shoes laced up right it's like james clear with two minutes and then your mind will say well, this isn't so bad so instead it's like you know what i'm just go up for a mile see how we do you know just i'm just gonna do one mile and you're mile in and you're like fine like my mind totally tricked me like i'm okay next thing you know two miles four miles six miles and then boom, you, you, I got goosebumps. You don't want to stop. You want to keep LFG. And so you keep going. And, um, that's kind of how I, I, I practiced. Um, I practiced, you know, in the beginnings of a couple of years ago, really getting back into like some long running uh, marathons, endurance, nice. uh, ultra events, um, stuff like that. So bite sizes can grow into what Nikki said about the million dollars, 83, per month. That mask, yeah. right? Yeah, it sounds right. It sounds right. So a <laughs> lot, lot of how to's, gents. I'm going to, I'm going to steer the ship a little bit here. Um, a lot of how to's we talk community. I mean, the how to's themselves inherently are just beautiful. So thanks again for sharing your knowledge guys. Um, let's talk about leveling up though. You know, one of the things we like to talk about, we like to make noise. We like to get juiced. We like to get energized. Um, and energy is directly related to passion. So you guys are passionate about software development, you know, design, engineering let's talk about like leveling up like talent is a big thing because things are coming back you know we need people every client i work for needs people uh work with work for um so let's talk about leveling up like you know for designers talented designers engineers resources i want to hear more about that and how you're doing in that world yeah you know you, you kind of mentioned it at the top of this which is that's what makes all companies go around right uh the, the people who can facilitate the product or service and bring it to life. And so I think, you know, we've seen over the past couple of years and, you know, more, more presently in the, the news, right? This idea that we need more talented people here in Buffalo, either willing to move or, um, you know, let's say being created in Buffalo. And, you know, what we've been doing at Helm is really uh, trying to provide more of that to, to people. Um, we've been doing it over the past five years or so, but we really want to bring structure to that as, as a way to help people level up from, you know, zero to one. It might be somebody who's, uh, 
in college and wants to start doing some design work and then be a full stack dev in like two years, right? Um, uh, we're providing the path for them to do that through kind of hands-on working with people in, in real environments um, and giving them the proper kind of guidance through uh, mentorship, right? And, and uh, action, hands-on action. And it's, it's really interesting. Oftentimes I'll, I'll, talk to Nicholas and the team and use uh, this idea of like the Navy SEALs or military and how they run their teams. And it's really fascinating because, you know, the Navy SEALs, the whole the whole structure is built off of teams of like six, six people, right? Just teams of six people. And it's so analogous to what we do at Helm when we create a, a software team of a designer, engineer, product person, kind of deploy them, right? We're teams of really two to six people. Um, but what what's interesting is how that team interacts, right? And how autonomous they become out in the world when they're on a project. And it's just like if they're going into war, right? They're they're able to talk in a shorthand. Um, they're able to understand the situations. Um, they have all the soft skills as well as the technical skills to really execute at the highest highest level out in the world. And that's that's really what we're we want to help people do at at Helm. Um, it, beyond just, you know, provide the service, you know, create the, the wonderful software. It's really about helping those people grow, helping, uh, you know, our team grow into what they want to be. And that's through, you know, vision and goal setting, you know, OKRs and, and check-ins and, and regular, um, you know, awareness and pressure towards meeting those goals. I hope I didn't butcher that. I, I think that. Oh, dude. High level Navy vision thing. thing. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I was just say the Navy SEAL comparison, you know, uh, the military, the discipline, the accountability, uh, the cross functional kind of, you know, teamwork that has to happen, which is why that makes them the best of the best. And funny, David Goggins gets mentioned being a, a you know, a retired Navy SEAL. I mean, that, I, and I, and I, I'm glad you said that because now, candidly on air, as I go out about the world and I profess the, the greatness that's being manifested by Helm Experience and Design, I can weave in a little Navy SEAL comparison stuff right there. Let's go. I mean, come on, though. Yeah. Seriously, those well, guys get about, it done. It's about discipline, right? And I think, you know, we're, we're not for everybody, right? Just like the Navy SEALs aren't for everybody, right? We're for people who really want to op, who are like, want, truly want to build a craft truly want to operate at the top of their game and deliver things that are going to, you know, put a dent in the world through, you know, products and, and services. And in order to do that, you have to be like, you know, mentally sharp, you have to be technically sharp, you have to be a phenomenal communicator. And through all those different factors, and, you know, we want to help people build those skills, um, you know, as the team at helm right so you could come in from college you could come in from two years from another career and we could help you kind of grow into someone who's going to operate at that level and you know i think whether you you stay at, at helm for the long term or kind of move on to another company our, our track record of of um you know the the team that we have around the table is just fantastic they are they are these people like uh that are the navy seals right they know how to speak to when one person looks left the other person looks right because they would know to cover that person's back right we we operate in this this shorthand speak and acronyms and the way we fill our uh, project management software and those types of things are really interesting for us to create right like we're not doing the work of navy seals but you could learn from their uh mental strength and some of their operations and apply them to something like uh, software design and development in order to be highly, highly effective. Mm. Nick, do you have anything that you want to add to that that tapestry of just beautifulness? No, I mean that was very, it was very deep, uh, detailed. Like that's that's you know I think the only thing we're we're to add is um you know like and you talked about at the top is that the you know the fortunately for for Western New York we've had you know like ACV like grow and sort of stress the system a little bit like ACV and m ts expansion um, among and then like other startups you know in that in that vein have stress have like stressed the talent pool locally which is great for Western New York um, and it's a bit of a challenge then for like smaller company like us and that's where you know like a lot of this again like um, necessity is the mother of invention like comes from where like okay it's a little harder to hire people we have to figure out how to 
help people grow internally that want to grow and help people grow externally as well that maybe so like you know we we have uh, one of our 10 employees went through lambda school even he was a non-traditional developer background um you know so lambda school is like a six-month program that teaches um people how to become developers you know previous to that he was working in a warehouse um and now he's you know he's a developer here um building mobile apps web apps etc so you know like you know those are the people that we also you know get get juiced as you like to say juice baby to help, <laughs> you know grow and like you know learn that craft that jonathan talked about um here so you know they often will start with us as contractors we have another working right now with us and um you know like the idea is that they like these are the people that those diamonds in the rough you wouldn't have found because you know you're trying to 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 locate people in the in the, the usual spots um so like that's just another place where we hope to to we're going to continue to grow talent which grows talent locally you know on a small scale but it's still important um you know and and you know the thing we're working on now is like an apprenticeship model that we can apply have people apply to to help them grow into these designer and developer roles um so you know it benefits them in the community because we're we're helping people learn new skills that want to learn these things and it helps us because you know we need the talent and we need to continue to foster the growth of talent um you know in the region for for our sake but also for all the other companies that are looking for people too so it's it's one of those things that we'll be we'll be rolling out you know in the next couple of months hopefully that we can we can hopefully start to get some traction and, and just help people learn yeah and you see that trend across a lot of companies in buffalo now like m and is doing wonderful things tech buffalo right ub right it's really fantastic to see so over the next you know couple of years you're going to see all these you know seeds of people start to be sprouted and it's just really exciting because again you know nicholas and i are are buffalo to the bone born and raised here and to continue to have that impact right not only from the service side but also like just helping people level up and grow um it really means so much and even if you know helm isn't the their uh end place right we find that people go on to some of these successful names that we've already mentioned a bunch um, and, you know, back to like the vision stuff, right? We do OKRs with people and, you know, one of the OKRs is always personal, right? So it's not just about, hey, how do you level up your career? But it's no, how do you learn the skill on how to set your vision in life is what, what you want to be as a human and then in, in be enabled by the team around you, right? This team of Navy SEALs kind of pushing you to, to do that and holding you accountable. Um, and all those things kind of, play a factor in personal growth, right? You can't just burn yourself out on software development. You know, you might have to learn medica meditation or how to run a long distance to build a healthy lifestyle. And meditation is part of getting yourself ready to run those long distances, right, brother? Very much. Um, very well said. And I think there's two maxims. I gotta, th I gotta think there's two maxims that I, I certainly um, have at top of mind at all times. Uh, I gotta think that you, you've also in some way, shape or another have these and those are and here they are. Do the right thing for yourself and for others and serve yourself and serve others. You know, they're kind of like combined, but it's all about doing the right thing and serving others. Um, and, and, and you use those, you know, filters You drive in the car. It's an example that happened in real life months ago. I was craving donuts and like a panini and like a coffee at like two o'clock. And uh, I got the left, I'm in the, in the traffic and traffic at the left uh, signal on to go to, you know, whatever one Tim Hortons, whatever. And uh, on the right, though, there was a healthy place. And I had to wait for cross traffic. And I said to myself, when I'm getting ready to turn, I said, is this going to serve you? Is this serve you, John? I said it out loud. My answer was an expletive with no next to it. And I turned the right signal on and went to the healthy place. So two maxims that you guys certainly live by, your company lives by, your ethos. And um, I'm certainly energized and grateful to be sitting here on pod 2.0. Um, there was some discussion at the beginning of a venture studio. Um, I don't know if you wanted to ruminate on that. And then I had one final question that is a part of now season two. It's all about what keeps you going. So we got two last stops to make venture studio. If you wanted to hit that. Um, I know it was mentioned earlier, and I wanted to make sure I had it at the top of mind. And then that last thing. Yeah, so so in that realm, really, Helm has always kind of taken risk on, you know, even from the early days and in, in, uh, companies that have found a lot of success here in Buffalo, we've taken risk on and done 
done work, created software and design for, um, you know, equity or deferred payment. And I think, you know, as we continue to grow, uh, we're continuing to do that with people who we, who we really find that, that connection with, who, who share that, like, want to put a dent in the world, want to operate at the high level. Um, we continue to kind of do that with people through a, a venture studio model. And it's, it's exciting to see. Yeah, I don't know, Nicholas, do you want to maybe elaborate on that or? Uh... No, I mean, I think it's it's another one of these items that, uh, you know, again, like you never stop growing, all the stuff we've talked about, you know, like the, you would keep assessing the company and what it is. And, you know, like it, it's, you know, you can start as just a services company that charges people by the hour, you know, but like as we've expanded and we don't do that, but as we've expanded and grown, you know, we, we've, you, we just like, okay, like what, what, it, what does it take to expand that and start to invest in these companies, you know, maybe with cash or again, with like some sweat equity or, or how do we start to assess that? So like, these are, these are the things that start as questions, you know, maybe a couple of years ago and we start to adapt and, and make and do, you know, more of a model that we follow today. So that's something we're going to continue to push on, but, you know, we want just like all these other organizations, we want to create more startups, more technology businesses in, in Western New York, because not only does it benefit us, it also benefits the whole community because of the, the jobs and again, the wealth it creates. So, you know, these are things that we run as well to make, uh, to just to continually evolve Helm and to make it uh, just have that impact in the, in the community. It's all about impact. And then when we're all on the ground or wherever, it'll turn to legacy. So impact is that real people talk about legacy, but legacy isn't until you're gone. So uh, it's impact that needs to be thought about. So that said, we'll adjourn here, but I want to hear from both of you as, 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 you know, detailed or as brief as you'd like, start with John, Johnny, what keeps you going, brother? Mm. And it doesn't, it's not going to be like, this is it. Like it doesn't have to be an inclusive um, response, you know, whatever's sure, top sure. of mind right now, what keeps you going? Yeah. So, you know, back to some of the things around, you know, being aware, I remember, geez, this was like, you know, 2015 and Joe Neiman and I were working on an early version of the ACV product and we were joking around and he looked at me and he said, only the paranoid survive. And that's always stuck with me because him and I both have this like drive and obviously Joe has had incredible success, but it's always like stuck with me because I feel like that paranoia, that you know, fear that something's in us that that pushes forward. And so, you know, it's really that there's there's like butterflies in my stomach regularly on these ideas and these different businesses and these different inventions that can create. And it all starts to boil down to the zero to one question. Can you make an idea reality that creates value for people? And I think that um, after a lot of reflection over the past decade, that is a huge driving factor um, for why I work in this industry and do the things at Helm and, you know, the community, um, you know, make something that wasn't real, real. Um, and that's wow. besides like, you know, my my son and daughter. But yeah, that that's kind of a, a theme that keeps me going. Beautifully said, dude, that uh, let's say one more time. So taking things that are not and making them into reality. Right. That's all. That's some Star Wars stuff right there, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Use the force, my friend. Oh, baby. Let's go. The dark side. Nikki, you're up. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, like it, I think it's similar, right? Like it's a, it's a, it's a, which makes sense that we'd have similar answers. Um, but, you know, to me, it's like, it's slightly different because um, I don't operate. I am paranoid, but I don't try to bring it as much as Jonathan does. Um, <laughs> you know, so it's more like, uh, you know, I enjoy like taking an input and seeing the output, whatever that might be, you know, so that can be something, you know, as simple as like money earned, but it can also be something like the number of jobs created mm. or just like the benefit it brings to someone, to another person, you know, when you start to see like someone using you know, a product we build out in the wild. So like, it's, it's, it's that idea that, you know, it can be sliced and diced any number of ways um, that I, I find that keeps me going right. And in in like to answer the question is that I, I just want to see the, like, see the output, see the benefit uh, that it has provided for people. 
Um, so sometimes that shows itself in like analytics and metrics. Sometimes it's softer and it's like, it is literally seeing a line of people to eat tacos at Lloyd, you know, like those are the kind of things that you can start to extrapolate that, that are like, oh yeah, this is, this is why I do this. You know, when having a hard day, especially, um, but yeah, it's, it, it, it's all stuff like that. You just want to see that the work you did affected somebody. You know, and then ideally lots of people, you know, like in, in certain cases. The power of one, boys, the power of one. All it takes is one and the ripple effects can go from there. Beautifully said. Sure. Beautifully said. I appreciate you answering those uh, or that that question. Um, so what about you, John? You can't leave. You're not out of this question. He can cut this out if he wants. We'll see if he does. <laughs> oh, I have it top of mind. It's so great that you asked. I actually wrote it down over here. No, I'm kidding. Right. Um, whiteboard, that notebook. <laughs> yeah, let me get that whiteboard over there. No, um, and this and this is um, this sounds a bit, and I should work on. I will be working on the language of this, but um, because it sounds maybe a little. I don't know if it seems like I'm uh, coming from like a, a place of superiority because I'm, I'm certainly not. Um, I've seen the other side of life and you guys are both living on it. You're both living in it. I mean, sorry. And what does that mean? Um, when you go inward and you work on yourself every single day, even if it's just that 1% Kaizen, right? Just that little percentage improvement day by day over a long period of time. It is truly special to see what life can, can become. Um, you know, I, I went from a overweight, you know, dejected, not clinically depressed, but certainly feeling that way. Um, human being at the end of 2019 to, um, you know, what I am today, which is someone that I would self-describe as uh, em emphatically uh, passionate, um, you know, a, a person of empathy, a person of energy, obviously energy is a big one. Um, but I basically, through all the work of doing that internal work, and obviously a lot of it involves physical fitness, which is what you can tap into your mind and start doing that mental fitness. I have seen the other side of life and I want others to see it as well. So I will, I will not stop until I can create that real-time impact of as many people as possible so that they can have a potential similar transformation in their own unique way, of course, from maybe a place where they're not very happy with where they are to a place that they are as happy as they'll ever be. And it, it'll only then cascade into so many other places in their life, people, uh, the list goes on and on. So that's my why. That's what keeps me going. Love it, man. It's awesome. great. The transition so to change. Yeah. Transformation, baby. Catalyst yeah. of transformation. Let's go. But all right. Um, grateful to you both. This is fantastic. I think we actually may have eclipsed the pod 1.0's duration. So let's go. Um, uh, this was fantastic. There's so many golden nuggets here that uh, I certainly am going to listen to this. I, I already listened to them for editing and all the other stuff, but even just, you know, because there's so much wisdom that you have both dropped into this. Um, and so I'm grateful for the 70 ish minutes we spent together um, and all the great things that you both do as people, um, uh, but also as business owners, as leaders in the community. Uh, we're, we're really fortunate. I'm really fortunate and so many others are too. So Big kudos and congrats or more gratitude to you and then gratitude to Video Creator Network for making this all possible for me and what I do for Osmosis. So thank you, gentlemen, for being here and for your time. Thanks, John. It's been great. Thanks for having me. All right. We'll see you on Pod 3.0 in the coming uh, months, potentially. And Amazon will no longer be the sponsor. I'll probably be looking at uh, someone else. <laughs> but anyway, thanks again, guys. We'll talk soon. Take care.